Welcome to the family with co-host Catherine Brandt. Tevin uh, and Andy Brandt Bernard. You guys, we, we don't what have a, our set order. What a great start. Well, it's Monday. And sure it, is. They had all worked out. Everybody got their name in there and all, everything is great and fantastic and Tevin. wonderful. And Tevin is sitting in for Alex. Yep. <laughs> She had, I believe one of the kids was not feeling well, so she asked if I could step in today. That's what I understand. Okay, I want to run this by you guys because it's a Minnesota thing, but it's also a national thing. In Nashua, New Hampshire, Dean Phillips is growing more defiant by the day in his stern but polite Midwestern uh, tone. The Minnesota congressman tells voters uh, in this proudly independent state. Now, they're talking about the proudly independent. Proudly independent from what? New Hampshire? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, Unless I, you're talking about Minnesota. I, I thought that the... Minnesota yeah, is like the least independent state there is. Exactly. So. Yeah, I thought New Hampshire was independent most of the time. Are they most of the are time? Or they have the most people that say that they're independent voters, I believe. I so, could be making that up, though. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, I see. I was saying I've never been to New Hampshire, Vermont, or Maine. I've never been to any of those three there states. There are nine states where independents outnumber other dependents. Okay. And is New Hampshire one of them? New Hampshire is one of them. Yep. So there you go, 41%. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Dean Phillips is uh, running for president. He, mm. uh, a lot of people are not, well, top Democrats nationally have chided Phillips for daring to challenge President Joe Biden and the Democratic National Committee has told New Hampshire voters their Tuesday presidential primary election will not count because the state is holding the contest earlier than allowed. I don't really understand. So Allowed by who? Why do you do something if it doesn't matter? Hmm. I don't know. Like I said, I've, uh, well, we had Dean Phillips on the podcast about, what, three years ago, something like that? Mm-hmm. Dean came in because he was running for Congress at that time. That was three years ago, wasn't it, I think? Sounds right. Sounds about right. Very, very pleasant guy. Really, really nice man. Uh, I enjoyed talking to him, and he, he did get elected. Uh, now he's running for president of the United States. And I got to be honest with you, a lot of what I've read that he, he's saying, I would tend to agree with. You guys done any reading on him? Nope. So Dean Phillips is Minnesotan, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I remember him. Phillips Vodka. <clears throat> yeah, his oh. family is Phillips Spirits. And Phillips had screwdrivers. Really? No, no I made that. Oh, he <laughs> made that. <laughs> I <laughs> was done. Well, you I don't know. know. It's possible. Now billionaires make their money somehow. Well, that was so funny because he was on, uh, God, what show was he on? I saw him on a show last night, but I can't remember whose show it was. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. It was this morning, earlier this morning. He was on with, I don't, I don't I, CNN and Fox, it's the same people, but I can't remember any of their names or any of that stuff. But uh, he said, he, Dean Phillips is sitting there. Dean was adopted as a baby. Uh, his father, I believe, was killed in Vietnam, if I remember the story correctly. Uh, but he was adopted. But the the anchor on Fox, who was interviewing Dean Phillips, said, uh, first of all, uh, congratulations, on, uh, congratulations on your great success in the business world. I mean, a billionaire family. Uh, he was adopted. It was his father and mother that built the company, not him. I mean, God bless. I like Dean Phillips. Don't get me wrong. I haven't talked to him in a while now, a couple of years, but... He wasn't adopted. He, well, he his wasn't. dad was killed, but his mom wasn't. Yeah, I guess he was like half... Ad- he was adopted by the Phillips family, technically, yeah. when his mom remarried. But right. the mom is still around, so... Yeah, the mom is still around, so... Yeah, I guess he's not adopted. Uh-oh, wait a minute. I already got a message from Alex. We better see what it says. Uh, would any of you be able to see if AJ can cover for me tomorrow? Tevin can't, and I caught Sage's illness. Oh, no, great. AJ, no, AJ cannot. The house. But that's all right. We don't need anybody covering for it. AJ can't. I know that because he has his other job. And, uh, and I Tevin's might not. be able to engineer it from down here if I set things up right. Well, I mean, I can just record the show on your computer and then add everything in post. Oh, there but we people go. people can't listen to it. Uh, no, live. they wouldn't be able to listen to it live. I was trying to think of somebody else. It's not a huge deal. I think they'll live without listening live or a day. Yeah, it's a tiny fraction of our audience. We don't need someone to drive all the way in just to put the stream on. That sort yeah. Of thing. yeah, we can just do it on stream. That's fine. That'll work. Yeah. But yeah, what do you guys think of that? The fact that we've got Biden, we've got, looks like Trump or Nikki Haley. Probably Trump's got a big, that's what, tomorrow night, the New Hampshire uh, 
is tomorrow night, so we'll see how that goes. Mm. But uh, I kind of like the idea, and it's not just because I've met Dean Phillips and all the rest of it, but I kind of like the idea that um, there is another another person running. Because i I got to be honest with you, and maybe I like your comment on this situation, I'm getting a little tired of the two-party system. Uh, I like Italy, where they have like 24 parties. <laughs> I just love that. They got twenty four different people running for whatever they could. They don't call it the president of Italy any. It, it's um, what do don't they, they have call a it? president? I don't know. Oh, does it? Italy, well, the, it, in, in effect, it is the president. No question about it. But uh, he's head of state of Italy. Yeah, it's a president. It is a president. Yeah, apparently, okay, so you run for president of Italy. My favorite uh, take on the two party system is, of course, The Simpsons. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a shock. <laughs> so these aliens come down. And they take over the positions of the two, the Republican and the Democrat uh, nominees for president. But they're found out, and people are like, well, I'll just vote independent. And they go, go ahead, throw away your vote. Throw away your <laughs> vote. That's, that's what you want to do. Yeah, I, I'm not a Democrat, and I'm not a Republican. I'm neither one. I've, I've voted different ways. I've voted for Republicans, and I've voted for Democrats. And I have all my life, though, even... <laughs> You know, because my mother was a was an ardent Democrat, so I started out as a Democrat and, and voted that way for quite some time. And then they started doing things I didn't really care for, so I tried the other side, found some things I didn't care for there. So it's a little difficult to be a centrist in America because people are so locked into that two-party system. It's amazing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, like it would be interesting to see if they did. So like when people argue about, sports you know players who's better who's worse they'll take right. the picture and the name out and they'll just list the stats or accomplishments and go which one would you pick and then surprise Ooh. the person you thought they should do something some sort of like think tank type of experiment with that with politicians like take pictures out and their party out and you just look at the policies and the things they've done and what they stand for and that's what you'd be making your decision on not just voting because it's whatever party well, plus the fact, the things that they put in place, the things they put into law now are just insane. And I'm mm -hmm. talking about both parties. Like, would you people just back off and calm down? Every Everything has to change. And I got to be honest with you, and I know Dean Phillips brought it up uh, when he was talking to the Fox News this morning. Um, I, I just don't understand. It's all or nothing for both of those parties. You either agree with, with us 100% or you agree with the other people 100%. Mm -hmm. That's not true of any... Do you know anybody... That, well, there have got to be people that are locked in and will only vote one way, but, you know, that that doesn't seem very prudent to me. Yeah. But, well, I don't even know people in my personal life that are friends that I'm like, I agree with everything that's ever come out of your... Right, mind. right. So to then say that's how you feel about your politics is wild. Well, the amazing thing is that we all live different lives, but for some reason they don't want to take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. It's like we didn't grow up the same. We don't live the same. We don't have the same life. Why do you want me to agree with everything you think? I can't do that, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know. I just really wish that the bo – I wish both these parties would back the hell off and stop being so harsh. It's like, geez, settle down for God's sake. How about if we get a committee to run the government? What do you think? Uh, I don't want that job. No. <laughs> you don't want to be on the committee either? No, Nothing? I really don't. Committees, all it is is infighting. And if you've ever been in a committee with um, mm -hmm. more than 10 oh, women. True. yeah. Ugh, no. <laughs> really? Why? What happened? Well, then. Well, not that all women are like this, but my experience is, is if you've got a very passionate voice about something, she will talk to everybody like they're a child. Oh, really? And if yeah. you disagree or have a different point, they'll just get more exasperated because you're just such a child. That's how they talk to you. But why? Um, because I think that that's just because guys can raise their voice and kind of be bossy and that's okay. But if women do it, then they're shrill. Oh, really? So they've got other <laughs> weapons, I guess, for better lack of a better term, in order to control what the narrative is. And that's one of my least favorite. I'd rather have somebody yelling at me personally. Yeah, than I agree. Acting like I'm a child who can't understand something. 
Well, I, look, I mean, because I did leave the Democratic Party many, many years ago and tried the other side, I was condemned by many, many people. It's like, I'm just trying to see where I fit in, well, if Tom, that's okay with you. You were damned if you do and damned if you don't. Oh, that's true. Mm-hmm. Because you were, you know, you had such a big amount of success in Minnesota. And, you know, everybody knows that when somebody's on the top, people got to start cutting them down. Why do people do that in Minnesota? Where'd that come from? I don't think that's just Minnesota. It's everywhere, you think? Oh, yeah. You've been yeah. hearing about that it's historically throughout time. I mean, anytime uh, somebody got to, you know, a ruler or whatever gets too big for their britches, you got to right. knock them down a peg. Britches. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. You know what's kind of weird to me, though, and I don't mean this in a negative way, I, just the way I reacted to things. Our current governor, what's his name again? I don't even know his name. Uh, Walls. Walls, Governor Walls. Yeah, was it Mike Walls? Tim. <laughs> I don't know his don't name. Know. Wow. I, swear to God, I don't even know what the hell. Because the first time you I ever saw him. Ginkgo Biloba or something. I do. I need <laughs> Ginkgo Biloba. To get I used my, to take Ginkgo Biloba. Get my brain straightened away. But, and I don't mean this in a negative way, but every time I see him, I think about, why is there a janitor that's governor now? You know, he looks like every other middle-aged white dude. <laughs> middle-aged. You know, yeah, I don't even know what he looks like. He's just like a dumpy, frumpy guy. Yeah, he sure yeah. does. He, and I, I, he I'm in, sorry though. to all the people that adore and worship him, but I'm just no, saying, as so an funny. observation, <laughs> I'm not saying yeah. anything about how. No, he's just, just very nondescript. Yeah, like, yeah, that's, that's a good way to describe him. Yeah, he ironically. Looks like, yeah, he looks like every uh, like your science teacher in seventh grade. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Just like mm-hmm. some guy. Yeah. Did we not have at some point 19 billion dollars uh, surplus? In uh, Minnesota, uh, seventeen or nineteen, yes. Seventeen or nineteen. Just billion. about five minutes ago. So where did that go? They had a meeting and they squandered it all. <laughs> On what? And then they raised taxes. I don't know. Does anybody know what they squandered the nineteen billion on? Uh, I'm sure there's some sort of explanation in the Star Tribune. I mean, shouldn't it have gone back to the people who actually paid the taxes? That would be good. Well, that was, I guess, some of it supposedly went back, but I don't know if anybody that has seen a check. But I didn't get a maybe check. Maybe they just canceled that at the last minute. I don't know. Did you say it was seventeen million? Because billion. Oh, billion. billion. Oh, okay, I thought you said million because I was oh, like, Andy's, this is saying stuff on billions. Andy's got it. Where Minnesota's seventeen point five billion surplus went? Where'd a it go, series. Andy? Oh. That's a long story, apparently. <laughs> it's a long story it's where a it very went. long story. There we go. Okay. Wow, they've got all sorts of data here. So did it anybody go to the Bernard family? Do you know? <laughs> it's not uh, likely. No. It doesn't look good for the Bernard family. No tax but... cuts for us. No, I suppose not. Um, I know uh, probably a lot of it went to education, which, of course, they're still complaining that they don't have enough money. I don't. I wish that they would put a number on it. This is the number that we will be happy with. And then they could just shut up because we would give them all that money. But then we, we would have to be able to t- keep, keep track of it so that we knew it was being spent on mm-hmm. things other than just, you know, happy feelings about something. Well, did they make any statements about, man, we need to cut taxes because we can't be having a $19 billion or $17.5 billion surplus no. that we're going to piss away on other things? No, Why they don't they cut them. our taxes? They just raised taxes. I know, taxes. they just raised taxes. Tons. Yeah. Yep. I just don't get it. I don't Tevin, isn't it like 10% now in, or over 10% uh, in yeah, Minneapolis? Be, yep, I believe it's a little over 10%. Oh God. And St. Paul. St. Paul yeah. went up too. Because and they, we're talking income? No, no sales, tax. Tax. sales tax. Just sales tax. Thanks. I believe. Sales tax Oops. is over 10% now. Yeah, maybe I heard 10 it's going to 15, half. actually. No, uh, they, that would be suicide. That, 15? Well, that would be like... Right. I think 15% might be the corporate tax rate. That yeah, that makes more sense. Yeah. 15% would be more than anywhere else in the country by a large... Well, they're proud we of like that. being first on that kind of stuff, yeah, especially if it's for something that, you know... That's true. Some pet project. We do indeed. Look, I love Minnesota and all the rest of it. I, I don't like the far left and the far right in Minnesota. i got to be very honest with you. I have never seen a state... and. You know, I've lived in a few, but not. I haven't lived in all 50 states. Oh, shoot. But Minnesota loves to harm people. If you're not part of the far left or the far right, they love to do you harm if you're successful. Because if you're not one of them, you're not worth even having around. You know who doesn't like people? Mm. Animals. Animals? <laughs> do you want to? Sorry. 
want to change the subject. Well, she changes the subject by looking at pictures on no, her phone. Listen, this is to me. Guess how many turtles are eaten every year? By what People. humans? People. Oh, turtles. People eat turtles? No, oh, yeah. I've heard in other countries, maybe, I would assume. Yes, how many? There's a famous story about, um, I think it might have been Darwin. Their expedition would go to the Galapagos and get all these turtles to bring back to, where was he from? England, I'm assuming? I think so, yeah. To study. And they did this multiple times, and on none of the excursions did they actually manage to bring back a turtle because they just couldn't help themselves but to eat all of the turtles. <laughs> Because they were just so delicious, apparently. I've they were like, well, there's science, but well, that turtle's looking mighty tasty. That was, uh, we've been watching that History in Seven Glasses or something. Six, six Glasses. Yep. Six Glasses. And yep. they were talking about how sometimes uh, people had to be dumped off places because the crew wouldn't have enough beer to get back to wherever the boat <laughs> right. came Right, so they have to have enough beer to get back. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It is true. Yeah, it was very, that, that was... It's an interesting series. It but really it, is good. Dan many, Aykroyd. How many turtles? How many turtles what? Now? Are eaten every year by people. Five. 50, Five. 50,000. 50,000 turtles. And where are these turtles from? I have no idea. Well, it doesn't say. Because how many crocodiles? They eat crocodiles too? Does that include, does that include I've had crocodiles? Alligators? Yeah, I wonder. Is that crocs and alligators? Because they're kind of the same. crocodiles. Thing. The difference in crocodiles and alligators is what? No, they look uh, the same. But their nose alligators is can be in, I believe, freshwater, and crocodiles are saltwater. Oh, okay. Yeah. One, right. one you'll see later, and one you'll see in a while. Is what? Yeah, yeah that, that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Really? See you later. There you go. Later. Really? <laughs> well, did I tell you this was only going to be a 17-minute show today that we're going to I'll wrap just, it up? I'll just um, mute my mic the rest no. of the show. There is a saltwater crocodile and a freshwater crocodile. See? Okay. So, well, hmm. I mean, in general. In, yeah. Well, I know uh, crocodiles live in Africa and gators live over here in Florida. And it's something about the, That's all I know, basically. The, their snout is either yeah, I think pointy or snub. Crocodiles or have pointy faces i think yeah whereas gators have broad faces yeah that's exactly right i don't know they're all the same thing i have a friend doug dawson whose wife they're uh they're in uh southern florida and his wife walked up to the tee box at a golf course last week rounded the bush there was kind of like a little row of hedges to get up to the uh, tee Walked around the hedge. There was a fully grown alligator on the tee it box. Was monster. He nope. sent a picture. Mm -hmm. Did you see? You saw the picture. Yeah. I mean that thing is yeah, gigantic. It, yep. it was big. I mean that, this oh. this. Uh, well, that is an alligator though. That wasn't a crocodile. We don't right? have that crocodiles would be a gator. in Florida. No, no crocodiles in Florida. Uh -huh. This thing looked like it was pff, ten feet long. That was a pretty big gator. Yeah. I really never thought that much about alligators or anything in Florida until we went on that airboat ride oh, out God. into the Florida Everglades. Yep. Mm -hmm. And honest to God, there must have been, we must have just seen 500. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Just laying on the banks yep. of the, it was like so many <laughs> croc, I mean, alligators. Yep. I couldn't believe it. And the guy that gave us the tour, he found a nest of them and he reaches down and grabs one. And it was going, yeah, they make which a gulping is a, sound, which is a sound for their mommies to come. And I'm Ooh. like, could we just hurry this up? And then the thing, <laughs> the thing chomped him. Oh, Chomp. big time. Uh, yeah. And he said that he, you know, he has a tetanus shot all the time and he had some sort of antiseptic because their teeth are so gross with dead meat yep. in there that they're, <laughs> it's when you get bitten by an alligator, you can get a really bad infection. Yeah, so they're they're gross and they're plentiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how and you can good deal eating. with that. And Are they good Apparently. to eat? Yeah, well, they taste they taste like you know they taste like chicken. I mean, it they just do. they do. Yeah, I say like, really. I say keep yeah. eating them. Get just go out there and make those things extinct. Indeed. Wouldn't bother me a bit. So are there like control issues down there in, in Florida? Like they have with the what is it, the big boa constrictors or oh yeah. Uh, or yep. I think the American alligator might be protected up to a point. Um, I know that quite a few cultures eat them, but mm -hmm. alligator I, hunting is legal from oh, August fifteenth to November first. But it is not a free for all. No. 
Oh, you have to be licensed, I would imagine. Yeah, it's like, well, it's like deer hunting season in Minnesota. Right. They have gator right. hunting season. Yeah. That makes sense. But anyway, people eat 83,000 crocodiles a year. 83,000? Is that mostly in, in the South, I'm assuming? Give, I would assume so. It yeah. doesn't give any of those kind of stats. It just... Florida, Georgia, Buffalo, Alabama. Buffalo, sea urchin, camel. Sea urchin is gross, 80, by 80,000. Horses, 5 million. Cats, Ooh, 10 million. camels? 10 million cats. Tilapia, 12 million. Snails, what? 15 million. Dog, Judy, <coughs> 25 million. Prince, pigeon, 60 million. Guinea pigs, 70 million. Yeah, guinea pigs were originally bred for meat. Shark, 100 million. Cow, 300 million. That eat this. Lamb, 500 million. Lobsters, 500 million. Turkey, 656 million. Salmon, wow. 750 million. Tuna, 900 well, million. Up. Rabbit, 1.2 billion. Pig, really? 1.5 billion. Octopus, 2 billion. Oysters, 2 billion. That makes sense. <laughs> that does make sense. Goose, 2.1 billion. Goose. Duck, 2.9. Shrimp, okay, 3 billion. Okay, that's good with the list there, honey. And, <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What's the highest? Cows. Chicken, that makes sense. 75 billion chickens are 75 eaten. 75 billion? Every so that's year. like, what, eight chickens per person on Earth every year? That's actually uh, not that I much. It. Well, chickens are one of the cheapest, best, <laughs> uh, readily available proteins. Yeah, they'll raise themselves, proteins. basically. Yeah. Well, what, the chickens that everybody eats in America are something called a Dutch something, and they, are, they grow to full size in like six months. Yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's probably why. Tevin, I have a question for you. Do you have any allergies? Uh, no. You don't have them? Andy and Catherine do. Yes. Oh, God, they're so bad today. Do you, have, you have allergies. Well, there's a new device that cures your allergies. I don't I believe it. I doubt it. No, I think you guys should do this. <laughs> and I'm not making this up, by the way. This is a headline today, uh, and you both should do it because you have allergies. Okay. I have mild allergies, nowhere near as bad as you guys get them. A new device cures your allergies by electrocuting your nose. All right. Mm. Sounds good. <laughs> your nose gets the chair. I'm going to go right now. What What do they mean by electrocuting your nose? You cauterize something up there? I don't know. You're cauterizing, yeah. Wouldn't that be no, a better? that's burning. The electro well, it's electrocautery. Yeah. So. I don't know. I, I vote no. I bet that hurts a lot. Does it, I like, seal so. things up or what happens? I don't know. Right. I don't no, you got the story. And and also, I'm not an expert when it comes to electricity and current flow, but you can't really just yeah. control that to just your nose without going to, you know, I don't know, maybe your brain or anything. Yeah, like or your that. eyeballs. Important. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder about that. How could it just, they can separate your nose from the rest of your mm -hmm. body for that? I don't little see how. Little lightning rods in your... <laughs> yeah, little lightning rods. That's all you need. But if it got rid of your allergies, would you do it? I, I assume... Well, you know what? Maybe I better read the story because I assume that it doesn't hurt. I Otherwise, will wait for five years. Well, everybody else does it. Yeah, really. Nine. I'm not going to be the first person to have any no. new medical thing done. No. Do you suffer from allergies? Are you willing to strap a comically large device on your face to uh, help deal with them? If so, you've got good news coming. A new gadget called the Nasocom <laughs> just hit Kickstarter. Yes, Nasocom. Oh, it's a Kickstarter. So it's probably a scam. You just strap it on your face for 15 minutes a day, and it supposedly makes your allergies a lot better. So how does it work? By electrocuting your nose. Hmm. It's got six electrodes, three for each nostril, that deliver small electric shocks to stimulate the muscles in your nose. They claim making your nose muscles contract and relax can help you clear your sinuses and let you breathe easier. It's small enough to take with you so you can use it anywhere. The promo video shows a guy using it at his desk at work. The downside is it's pretty bulky on your face, so you will be the weird one at the office. They plan to sell it for $100, but you can get it for 60 bucks if you back them on Kickstarter. They claim it'll ship by March just in time for allergy season what in the northern states. does it actually do? That's well, I a lot of... I read what it did. No, it doesn't say how it does it. It says it makes your muscles contract and relax. It can help your nose sinuses, clear your sinuses. And breathe easier. Your muscles contract and relax. That's what it says. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like a STEM machine that they use in sports uh, where they put like, those little pads on that yeah. work your muscles. Sounds oh, like yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I suppose that's what it, Yeah, I don't know. How, how do allergy? How do people contract allergies? <laughs> is there anything it's specific? It's an overactive immune response mm -hmm. to irritants. Really? 
Mm-hmm. So it's actually a good thing. Mm, well, no. no. Overactive is bad. I mean, you technically you live in an environment filled with plants, and those plants have pollen. Why people mm-hmm. become allergic to pollen <laughs> when you can't get away from it? I know. It doesn't, doesn't make any sense, sense right. at all. But, you know, dogs get a lot of food allergies, itchy skin, licking their paws at yeah. a lot of times is a food allergy. Um, we're just exposed to too much stuff, I guess. Too much. It has to be new to you, I would assume. Um, no, you can become no. allergic to things that you've been exposed to for oh, years. Really? Yeah. I know a, that. yeah. A lot of, a lot of, uh, I've read a lot about food allergies and such because I have some of them and Andy's always had a bunch of them. And a lot of times it's the foods that you've eaten over and over and over again. Your body will mm-hmm. decide that it doesn't like anymore. Mm-hmm. And why that would be, I don't know either. Uh, remember when you could order a rare steak and we were all cool with maybe dying of food poisoning? Man, those were the days. An American tourist in Canada posted a photo after they ordered a burger at the Toronto Airport Hilton. They had to sign a waiver to get it cooked medium. Medium? Oh, you've heard of this? Hey, I, I I this you've heard of this? I saw the headline, yeah, where they had to get the waiver because the... What? Of, no, it makes no sense. In order to get a, a medium-cooked hamburger, you have to sign a waiver. The waitress took their order and brought the burger. Then she handed them a food waiver that said they couldn't sue if it made them sick. Uh. So it's not cooked enough. Is that the well, problem? Well, what yeah. happened is somebody got sick, yeah. blamed yep. the steak that they ate, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden everybody's got to be worried about this because the state jumped in and made a bunch of regulations. Well, it says here it's not actually a new thing. Canada has had laws on the books for years that say restaurants have to do burgers well done to kill off any possible E. coli. That's at least 180 degrees, 160 degrees, excuse me. Hmm. Medium is 140 to 145. The person who ordered it said they didn't even end up eating the burger. They took a few bites, uh, but being told it might kill them kind of ruined their appetite. I suppose if your server told you this burger might kill you, I probably wouldn't eat it myself. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, ground beef, you're not supposed to leave pink. No. Because ground beef, it's extra contaminated. Because it's ground up. Yeah, because it's yeah. ground up. Mm-hmm. So technically speaking, you are not supposed to eat hamburgers that are medium. I don't know if I'd even like a hamburger medium, would you? Probably not. Like a steak medium is a whole different Yeah, steak deal. is different yeah. because the bacteria is on the outside of the steak. Right. So you sear the outside, the bacteria is dead. That's why you can eat a blue rare steak where it's raw on the inside but seared on yeah. the mm-hmm. outside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but a hamburger you can't do that with. Yeah, I don't know. This kind of stuff reminds me of, like, my dad when he was in his uh, assisted living place, they would not give him a poached egg with a soft yolk. Oh, yeah. Which was one of the reasons why he lived was for a poached egg. With that's all the man wanted. Yep. <laughs> you know, and they would not do it. They said that the health board said that they couldn't do it. But when he lived in the assisted living place in Arizona, they gave it to him all the time. So it's a, a lot of times state by state, country by country, whatever rule. Mm-hmm. And all it takes is one person that maybe had a poached egg mm-hmm. got sick and sued them, and now nobody gets poached eggs. Exactly. So that it seems yeah. to be so, so stupid. Like my, I, after I had my knee surgery, when I go and have my teeth cleaned, I'm supposed to take an antibiotic mm-hmm. because otherwise, I guess when you have your teeth cleaned, you get a lot of bacteria that gets in your system, and the last thing you want is uh, an infection in your knee. Yeah. This is really hard to deal with. So anyway, somebody took a the I can't hardly get get it anymore cuz the orthopedic surgeons don't want to give it to you and neither did the dentists because some woman took the wrong pill thinking it was the antibiotic. Mm. Got an infection, sued and now no and, and now nobody wants to give you the antibiotic because of this lawsuit. This is really? what I, this is what I was told. How one stupid idiot who can't take the right I pill know. from the right bottle affects me <laughs> probably it's for the rest money. of my life. I don't understand. It's all about money. It's all about getting sued. They don't want to be sued because they would lose money. And that's well, all that matters to people anymore. How did she win the lawsuit when she took the wrong I pill? I don't know either. Somebody. 
<laughs> well, I just ran across a headline that's kind of along the same lines. I don't know what this means, but again, this has to be about money yet again. Foston Hospital, latest in rural Minnesota, to stop delivering babies. They will not deliver babies anymore. Why? It says rising insurance and staffing costs have fueled the trend among rural Minnesota hospitals, although with competition from larger OB centers. So because it would cost them too much, it's too expensive, it's all about money again. You cannot have a baby at the Foston Hospital. Is it about the malpractice insurance? Uh, I can read the story. Delivering babies will no longer be scheduled at Essentia Health Hospital in Foston, Minnesota. Foston's way up north, isn't it? I have no, no idea, idea where Foston is. I've never even heard of Foston. Let's check Google Maps, I think shall it's we? way up north, if I remember correctly. Well, that is really bad news for the That's people terrible. that live in a small community. Yeah. One, once again, let's let's kill the small towns. Foston is, yeah, it's very middle of nowhere Yeah. Where, it's, northwest? It's just west of, well, it's like... What Several is? miles west of Bemidji, like 30 miles west. Bemidji. Oh, okay. Yes. I love so it's saying what? Bemidji. Bemidji. Way up north. <laughs> so it's kind of between it's Bemidji and Grand Forks. Yep, exactly. Almost ha- exactly halfway. <clears throat> that makes total sense to me because I, I drove through Fawson a couple of times. Population 1,400, so I'm surprised they even have a hospital. Or sex, for that matter. Or that. Thank you very much. But they do have a Minnesota dehydrated vegetables. So. <laughs> That's good. Well, at least they have some place where people can have jobs. <clears throat> Baby deliveries will no longer be scheduled at Essentia Health Hospital in Foston, Minnesota, under a plan that will further erode labor and delivery services outside of Minnesota's largest cities. Mm. So if you live in Foston, you have to come all the way down. You're going to eventually have to come all the way down to the Twin Cities. Well, well no. they, they can go, go to, to the Bemidji. next large town, I yeah. would guess. Mm. Well, they can Bemidji's relatively, yeah, 15,000. I'm sure yeah. they could just go there or they could just go to Grand Forks. But nonetheless, that's whatever. jobs being eliminated in a small yeah. town. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's services being eliminated in a small mm-hmm. town. It just doesn't, oh, that and stuff irritates me. I know that 99% of children are always born on their anticipated due date at the exact time where they're anticipated to come in. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, for that 1%. What if you're in Faustin and all of a sudden, you know, little kid is four week or like a week early or something mm-hmm. like that? And you have to drive all the way to Bemidji. You can't just go to Faustin to have your child. Nope, they will not deliver babies anymore. Can you? I wonder if you could get a midwife and have it at home. But then if there's a complication, you got a yeah, an can't ambulance do ride. Yep. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, Andy, you're going to have to look this up because Northwest Minnesota Hospital had hoped to reopen its uh, obstetrical uh, unit after a shortage of trained staff forced it uh, in June 2020 to divert deliveries and hours drive south to Ascension's Hospital in Detroit Lakes. You have to drive mm. an hour away to have a baby. Well, I guess if it's 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 Essentia, so it'd be their closest hospital in their network. In their network. So you could yeah. go to Bemidji right. or whatever, but then you'd be out of network. God. Yeah, it kind of looks like it. Fun. Once again, no. it's just, let's just make people's lives harder and harder. By the day. Yeah. Every day people's lives get harder and harder because of law. And again, it's always about how much money it's going to cost them. That's what it's always about now. Now that change will be permanent. Recruiting had become challenging at a time uh, when births are declining in the region, but pregnancies are more likely to involve risks and complications. Why would Why? that be? Why would pregnancies bo- be be more likely to involve risk and complications? More likely no than what? Yeah. Doesn't say. Hmm. Uh, according to a written statement provided by a Friday by Essentia spokesperson Anthony M- Matt, pre and post delivery care will continue in Faustin. Even if the deliveries happen elsewhere, the statement said, this increasingly common model of shared maternity services provides the safest care possible to our moms and newborns. How is that? I mean, if you've got to drive an hour to have a baby and all of a sudden your baby's coming right now, what the hell are you supposed to do? I don't know. I mean, you can't predict exactly when a baby's going to come, can you? No, not unless you're being induced. Not unless you're being induced, yeah. Yep. So what is this? This really is just about getting sued or what what are well, the, what's the part the, of what you read said something about staffing yeah they don't have enough people that's true so yeah and, and it looks like from tw- <laughs> since 2011 there's been 22 hospitals in minnesota that have closed their baby delivery really rooms. yeah boy i didn't know anything about that i'd never even heard of that before had you it costs mm. a lot of money to have a baby you would think that that would yes, be one does. of their bigger profit centers 
Yeah, you'd think so. Yeah. So I assume they could hire somebody to do home delivery, couldn't they? Yeah, you well, could do that. And it looks like a lot of these towns where they closed uh, the delivery rooms, if you are having a baby, they'll deliver them in the emergency room now instead. Oh, so they don't take you can still Yeah, you can still go there. They're not going to turn you away, but it's just in the emergency room instead of a designated area. Uh, that sounds like a horrible idea. It really does. I mean, if anybody's ever been to the emergency room with a kid with this horrible earache at 11 o'clock at night and there's been a car accident in there and you're not seen for seven hours, yep. mm -hmm. what are they going to do when there's somebody mm -hmm. having a baby and there's a big, you know, big car crash? Well, when I went to the emergency yeah. room after my surgery and I got complications, well, not complications, but, you know, the surgery area hurt they got me in like right away because they're like well that could be something really severe so we're just going to get you in so yeah but if the i think staff if you're having a baby then I, oh i know but what if the staff has you know 10 injured people that are like seriously injured from well, a car then, yeah, crash you're then... not going to take priority <coughs> no unbelievable uh oh we got to run this one by tevin you'll no. be all excited about this suhan wrote an, uh, wrote an article this morning turns out injury made cousins more valuable to vikings what do you think that means? Yeah, what does that mean? Uh, they're probably talking about just because we saw what the other options are that they didn't look great. So that means we need Cousins more than ever. But I would argue that now Cousins being 37 years old with a bum leg doesn't really make us too enthused to have him be our starting quarterback for the next three years. But why would he be more valuable now? Uh, because, well, when we traded for Josh Dobbs, that didn't work out. Jaron yeah, Hall true. looked terrible. Nick Mullins, I mean, he's not going to be a starter in the NFL. So no. we, we're kind of in a position now where we've seen what life past Kirk looks like, and we're stuck now with having to bring him back. So do you think they will bring Cousins back? Uh, yeah, unless he wants to go somewhere else, I think we have to bring him back and then probably draft a young quarterback. Uh, there was some mention of him going to play for Bill Belichick in Atlanta. Yep, yep. Bill Belichick, I think, just had his second interview down in Atlanta, and it mm -hmm. sounds like he's going to get that job. And when Kirk was asked about it, he said that it would be very cool to play for a Hall of Fame coach, which, I mean, who Ooh. wouldn't want to play for Bill Belichick? So I don't know what else people expected him to say, but it is weird if he is so gung-ho on coming back to Minnesota that he would even entertain that. God, that's a, that, that is an amazing situation. So I don't know. Where where are the Vikings going to – we were talking about this on the morning show. Um, it, it's just so hard to believe the Vikings are in this position where they have four quarterbacks and all four of them suck. Yeah, it's – to find a starting quarterback in the league is hard. So to find, a, you know, a second, third, and fourth string – you know, I can't yeah. fault the guys too much for that, but the options were very bare. It doesn't look like Jaron Hall, at least now, is ready. Um, but, yeah, this, is, I think, could be a big turning point for the Vikings because the rest of our division is getting much better, especially at the quarterback position, and so we're in danger of being left behind while the Lions are winning Super Bowls when the Packers are making the playoffs. So it's tough. It's going to be very difficult for, for our younger listeners. It's going to be very difficult for people like me to accept the fact that if it does happen and it could that the lions do win a super bowl the next couple of years, maybe this year, who knows? I, I don't know. Maybe it's going to be a couple more years, but to be the only team in the NFC North that's never won a super bowl is going to be very difficult to stomach. Yes. And it's pretty much the quintessential Vikings experience to have is being the only team left <laughs> in the division. That's very true. Oh, I'm just used to getting my ass kicked in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And, but that last one was, what, 1977? So it's been almost 50 years, for God's sake. Yeah, it almost feels wrong to keep bringing those Super Bowls up because they were so long ago. I know, so, but, I mean, it. 1977, I believe, was the last Super Bowl they played in. Or the 77 season, yeah. maybe it was 78. I don't remember. Because it was so long ago, but that's that's like what forty six, forty seven years ago was the last time they were even in a Super Bowl. Yeah, how can you be that bad for fifty years? I don't get it. It doesn't make sense because even and then you look at like the Lions and you can say, yeah, they've been that bad, or they've been just as bad for yeah. a lot long, if yeah. not worse. 
well, they can at least say they're close right now. We've never even been close. Yeah, no question about it. I just saw a headline that made me laugh. Do you know Jim Lilacs at all? The writer uh, for Star I, Tribune? No, I do not. You know, does anybody know him? Does anybody know of him? No, I don't read the paper. No, nah, nobody does anymore. That's very true. But he said he's trying to get rid of his uh, Sirius XM um, membership or whatever. Mm-hmm. Is. Subscription, I guess it is. Mm-hmm. He, the, Lilacs, why is it hard to dump streaming subscriptions? Is it that we've never, have we done that? We just wiped out uh, about $200 a month in subscriptions. Yeah, do, we did. Do you recall? That's true on TV. That's We did do that. Yeah. Found out that we had a direct TV subscription for $120 a month. That nobody ever used. $120 a month that nobody even knew we had. Nice. There you go. Oopsie. What the hell? So we straightened that out. Why is Jim Lilacs, uh, why is he trying to dump Sirius XM. Does anybody have any idea why he would want to get rid of it? I guess it's very difficult to do, by the way. Well, if you don't use it, once again, mm. I mean, people people are taking a heart, especially now. People just don't have, you know, fun money. <laughs> no, not right now. That's very, <laughs> and very true. People are, are looking at how they're spending their money, especially after the new year and with taxes going up and costs going up everywhere. People are starting to look at everything that they're spending and if you're not listening to something all the time or you're not enjoying it anymore you just got to get rid of it and that's his exact point well, i got to reach out to him try to get him on the show because i've never met jim lilix and he, probably we don't probably agree on a lot of things politically but this is not really a political thing lilix said that why it's hard to dump streaming subscriptions the reason he wants to dump sirius xm is howard stern he cannot stand <laughs> no, Howard Stern. He is. <laughs> Howard Stern has become a parody of everything he used oh, to I hate. Know. I everything know. he used to hate. He's such an ass yeah. kisser now. It now is he's a, now I'm a germaphobe. And now I'm yes. a disaphobe. And yep. I, you know, it's like, okay, you know, you've got so much money. I don't know what it is. Once somebody becomes a billionaire, why do they all of a sudden become a germaphobe and hate everybody and get super weirdly political and hide from? I think he was in hiding from the coronavirus for two years. I don't he think didn't he came even out of his house. Yeah. Right. He didn't leave his house for like two years. Yeah. Settle down. Well, Howard's and he's, nuts. You and know he's that, also right? made a, a fantastic living off of being the biggest misogynistic pig that ever walked. True. And people still. Think he's okay? I, how do some people mm-hmm. like him get a pass? Yeah, I don't. Need, mm-hmm. I don't think he has that big an audience. Never anymore. understood. No, not anymore. No, I don't think he does. All not that for well. years. Yeah, well, Sirius XM is still funding him quite heartily. Yeah, they're paying a lot of money. Yeah, <laughs> they're paying him a lot of. Money. I've never met Howard. Never even talked to Howard. He tried to Minneapolis and got his ass kicked. But uh, I think it's the only place in America he did get his ass kicked. As a matter of fact, was was Minneapolis, mm-hmm. St. Paul. We're well, number one. So Lilacs, we got to get Lilacs on the on the show because I want to talk to him directly about why he hates Howard's turn. Make so a much. note, Andy. <laughs> I think. Just do you know anybody at the Star Tribune? Does anybody know anybody at the Star Tribune? No. I, maybe no, they, maybe Sansevier could help you out with that. Uh, they don't like Sansevier at the Star Tribune, do they? Well, I don't. I think he knows people who. Oh, know he definitely people. does. Yeah, he's got people. I could run this by Sandy and see what what he thinks about it. But yeah, I, I, apparently it's very difficult once you subscribe to Sirius XM. It's very difficult to get out of your agreement. Yeah, and I would say probably not even just Sirius XM. A lot of these subscription really things, like I've subscribed to Fabletics. And oh, me too. Castle. Oh my God. Okay, what's this now? What oh. is it? Getting so, out of that was hard. Uh, it's a like athletic clothing wear where they have great deals on they like have really great and deals. Yeah. And so but, I wanted to just get like one thing one time no, and call it a day. Do that. Oh no, <laughs> we got to subscribe for seventy bucks <laughs> for like seventy bucks a month. And even the subscription is a good deal if I you're going to buy. Many, a lot. Yeah. How many pairs of sweatpants can you use? Real. I mean, that's the whole thing, right? <laughs> right, right. When you have yeah. when your whole when you when all of your drawers are bursting with fabulous stuff. You're like, I got to stop this. <laughs> yep. And it's, you can't, like, there's no, like, number to call or person to email that seems to be directly in charge of this. They bounce you around until you're mm-hmm. like, I just give up. But they make it very easy to skip a month. So you can hit pause where they won't oh, really? you. 
But then if you forget, now you just like now I you've just spent yeah another yeah I had been subscribed for like six months while trying to actively unsubscribe well, from this. well and another trick that they use is when when they think that you really mean it <laughs> when you actually do find the button <laughs> on the fortieth page of their website to uh, get rid of it. All of a sudden, it'll be like, are you sure you want to go? Here's 25 pairs of pants yep. for three cents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that good? Wait huh? a minute. <laughs> I guess I should get those. And then they reel you back in. Yeah, I don't know about that whole deal about, about dump. Well, we didn't have any problem dumping subscriptions we didn't use. No. I have found that if I want to get rid of a subscription, and I hardly ever sign up for anything anymore because of that. But... Um, you look online how to how to stop whatever right mm -hmm. subscription service and usually somebody has made a youtube video <laughs> with page after page after page how to find the actual because congress mm -hmm. passed a few years ago one click subscribe right one click unsubscribe oh good but that doesn't mean that they don't have that they can't bury it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, they bury it. Yeah, so you, you can can't find, find it. it. You can find it, but you usually need oh, a tutorial really? on how to get to it. So <laughs> yeah. they've circumvented the problem with people being able to get rid of things by just making it hard to find it. Yeah. Or there's apps like I think one's called Truebill or something like that, where you it'll connect to your like a bank account, it'll pull all of the monthly subscriptions that you have and put them all in one place. And the app will actually unsubscribe for you for some of them that allow it. So there are, there are oh, some really? ways, but there are definitely a lot of places like Fabletics that make it extremely difficult. Yes. Fabletics, is, what is that? Fabletics is like an athleisure mm -hmm. uh, clothing. Oh, okay. They became it, popular because of Kevin Hart. For men. Oh, and for oh, women, no. it was... Who was it? There was a woman that started it who was a movie star. It has to be star, Taylor Swift, isn't it? No. <laughs> maybe it was, um, oh, I'm blanking on her name. Conscious uncoupling person. Gwyneth Paltrow, maybe? Is that who Let's it was? See. That might be right. Fabletics. I feel like you she right started it or, or, or invested in it or Kate something. Hudson. Kate Hudson. There you oh, go. Okay. There's a Vanessa Hudgens, it looks like, also. Did some yeah, movie. they usually bring oh, in yeah, some new movie star to get to an ethnic mm -hmm. group. Oh, they do. Yeah, yeah I suppose. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> you know this whole Stanley Tumblr thing that's going on? Yep. <laughs> Stanley Tumblr? Yeah, the Stanley Tumblr. I don't know what a Stanley that Tumblr people is. People were standing in line. Uh, it's a. Oh, it's, the big bottle. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. They're, all those women were standing in line, mm -hmm. and they're selling them on eBay uh, for $1,000. For the pink one, a thousand dollars for a for the yeah. Okay. Um. Apparently, if you're a teenage girl or thirteen year old, if you don't have a Stanley Cup, you are now ostracized in school. Oh, is that right? Yeah. yeah everybody has to have one for a thousand bucks. Yeah, that that is the new trend: is having a forty five dollars Stanley quencher tumbler. I got to ask you guys a question. When I went what to school, do you think I would have given a rat's ass if anybody thought I was a loser because yeah, I didn't have a real. tumbler? Do you right. remember being in school and having to carry around four quarts of water with you everywhere you went? Nope. In case you walked down a hallway? Yeah, because they got, <laughs> got like thirsty? fountains. They had fountains. Yeah. When I was a kid. Nobody. I, I don't even remember when I was in track or anything having to have. No. You know, I don't remember no. the coaches bringing water. Nothing. It was just no. you're on your own. All right, I got to run into this. This story pisses me off to no end. But I, I look. I don't know what happened to our education system in America. The public education system has hit the wall so hard yes. on this anti-Semitism thing. I don't. Where did that come from? I don't get it. I did you know that was coming? Anyone? No. It. I I want to say it was just because of the war, like the Israel Hamas conflict that kind of kicked everything off. Because definitely just overnight, all of a sudden, everybody hated Jews. It was just so weird because all the Jews came to America because they were accepted in America. And it doesn't mean that, the, you know, in some areas they had to be sequestered or whatever special neighborhoods. Elon Musk privately visits Auschwitz-Birkenau site in response to accusations of anti-Semitism on X. I don't go on X. Is it that bad? I don't understand what they're saying 
that he said something against Jews? Because I don't think he, he did, does but not his site do that. Oh, oh yeah. Well, there's a lot of stuff. You know, the pro-Palestinian people are on. At but X. I still don't understand it. We're <laughs> Americans. Um, you're going to pick a side between. Israel and Palestine? Well, there is no Palestine, is there? Okay, first of all, none of this makes any sense at all. No, it doesn't to me. And the reason why it doesn't make sense is because college professors have decided about this colonialism thing. Mm -hmm. And that anybody that had any hand in colonialism, it doesn't matter if it was a cave person who got out of a cave and did something, we all have to suffer for it. And... The thing that people have to understand, and it's disappointing that educators don't know enough to look at it. Right. But the Islam, Muslims colonized far more of Africa and the Middle East and other areas than Jews ever did. Just out of sheer numbers, Jews couldn't have done it the way that Muslims have done it. So if you're going to scream and yell about colonialism, at least get your numbers and your facts straight. Oh, they don't care about facts. If you want to hate Jewish people for another reason, you might as well come clean about what it is because well, it's, it's just, not colonialism. It's an excuse to hate white-skinned people, but they That's won't exactly admit that. That's exactly what it is. A lot of people in the Middle East have white skin. Yeah, but people over here don't know that. Okay. When they think oh. when the, people over here think Middle East, like poor Middle East people, they're thinking of Aladdin. Yeah, <laughs> I guarantee hundred percent of the time they're thinking they all have That's monkey true. friends who steal bread with them <laughs> because they live in cartoon realities. I That's guess. true. They're I not smart right people. Yeah. It, this this whole this whole thing has been it really it was eye opening because I mean I went to college when I was a kid I thought going to college <laughs> meant really meant something you were gonna really uh, you know, hallowed sacred ground of learning and all of that stuff mm-hmm. I really believed in it. After this, I don't think I would – I wouldn't want my kid to go to college. If this is what Hell they're no. going to teach people is a pack of lies hatred. based on your political agenda. Teaching mm-hmm. hatred. That's what they're doing. I mean, how is that helping any person of any skin tone? I don't know. I don't understand. It's And it's – Oh, well, now we're going to hate these people for this month, and then exactly. next month we'll hate some other people. It and I, just yeah. read ridiculous what they're doing why you want to waste your energy and your life on hating anyone i don't understand and why all of a sudden jews oh my god they're the worst people on it when what is that like i said I, I just first of all so when you say the jews are, oh my god the anti-semitism blah, blah 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 so what you're basically saying to me is that every jew is exactly the same they're all alike so we can hate them all just well, black people went through that whole situation around the globe. Oh, they're all the same. Black people are all the same. Tevin, did you know you're all the same? Uh, yes, we are actually. <laughs> we, we get a newsletter for how to act, what to be be into, what to like. It's you know. so <laughs> ignorant to think that that's how people just, are. It, and our schools, our public school oh, system, and our colleges sorry. have done this to America. Yes, they're horrible. Well, yeah, remember. 55 or 45 years ago, I left college after one day because it was so stupid what they were. I had learned what they were teaching in high school and in college when I was about in sixth grade going to Catholic school. But now Catholics are hated, too. That was a, That's the next one coming, by the way. As soon as they get tired of picking on Jews... Then they'll move to the Catholics. Oh, they're, they don't like they're already just starting on Christianity. Oh, yeah. They've yeah, been doing absolutely. that for a long time. Yeah. Look, I know that religions get go over the top and people take it too far. That's all religions. And people I don't know. have done bad things in the name of religion, yeah, exactly. but that doesn't make it that it's everybody. But I don't understand how the hell I hate all Jews because the one guy that I didn't like was a Jew. I, what is that? I don't get it. I don't know. It's just um, I, a lot of people just operate on a reptilian brain yeah. pattern. And if one person does something wrong to me, then I, anybody that looks like that person yep. has to be horrible. Mm-hmm. I guess. I, I just right. And the, another question I have for people is, and this is something I ask everybody every time somebody goes after me, it's like, do you do realize that I have a wife and children and grandchildren? Why are you upsetting their lives by this? 
look, I know I succeeded without your help, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have played the Minnesota role and just fallen in line with everybody else, but that's not who I am. I made it on my own. I mean, not on my own. I was hired by people who believed in me, so I really appreciate that. But to go after me to the point where it hurts my wife, my son, my daughter, my grandchildren, I don't, why do you want to do something like well, that? They don't think that deeply. Why not? Because they have, they have lame-ass families? They just don't think that deeply. Most people are just well, reactionary, emotional messes, apparently. I have never understood it. I, I, I just don't understand. Again, the Elon Musk privately visits Auschwitz and Birkenau in response to accusations of now, it says accusations of anti-Semitism on X, but those are that's the written word, so how can they be accusations? I see just as many people hating on Jewish people as I do on Palestinian people oh, so on there's a social balance. media. I don't think oh. that it's heavily weighed one way or the other. I guess depending on what you follow or who you follow, you might see more of something. So people actually believe that all Palestinians, all Jews, all black people, they're all the same. They all act the same. Is that part of this whole deal that just because you're black, Devin, you act like all other black people? Yeah. Well, I mean, you hear it all the time, <laughs> especially if there's like a, a like British what? person that's black. They like, well, you don't sound like a black person. Where's your basketball? <laughs> well, they're British, first of all. Like, like everybody can call that. But yeah, there is kind of that. Like you're saying, Tom, they go, oh, well, if you know one Chinese person, well, now you know yeah. you're on all Chinese people. That is how most people think. It's people yeah. think in stereotypes and sweeping they generalizations because yes. it's easier. It's easier than just, you know, it's, it's difficult to conceptualize 8 billion individuals. It's a lot easier to conceptualize like 10 groups of people, all of whom are the same. Well, and that's why people get into their, you know, little political realm and stick to it because there's safety in numbers. Mm -hmm. It feels good to be part of a group where true. everybody herd, thinks yep. the same thing and believes the same thing, and it's just easier. I will close with this, and then you guys can close however you want. I eventually someday would like to meet a black Brit and get him to sing Jungle Boogie to me. <laughs> what? I do. The hell did you I just, just want say? Him, I want to hear one person go, get up with the get down. <laughs> I don't know. Do British people have accents when they sing songs? A lot of the time uh, they don't. I kind yeah, of feel like they don't. Well, maybe not. I think pretty much all accents go away when you sing. For some reason, why? Yeah. Why is well, that? Well, like the Beatles, famously, they. I think they said that we, you know, we kind of tone down our accents when we sing because oh. it's, yeah. it's, it's more. So people can understand the lyrics. No, they didn't have that kind of accent where it made them hard to understand. I think it's just it's more universal sound, especially since. Back then, America was like the epicenter of music in the entire world. Yeah, that's so true. So sounding American made them sound like all music. I suppose when I was living in Grand Forks, North Dakota, working at KNOX, my roommate, well, I had two roommates, Victor. Well, I, I, they weren't roommates. They had the house, and I moved in with them, Victor and Gail Treadwell. Victor was the older brother of Gail, and he was in the United States Army. Uh, so they... He, he was very, very happy with me because he would always go out. He's a nice African-American kid. Uh, I haven't talked to him in years. But he was very proud of me and very happy with me because they'd be dancing to the song Jungle Boogie, which was out at that time. And I said, Victor, you're going to look like a genius when you listen to this because everybody's dancing and it's very loud and all the rest of it. But I'm going to tell you, as soon as you hear the Tarzan yell, the song's over. And he came back and went, my God, you made me a hero, man. I was the only guy that stopped dancing once I heard the Tarzan <laughs> yell at the end of Jungle Boogie. <laughs> Who did that song? Cool in the Gang. Cool. Oh, that's It's right. a great song. Andy, could you bring up a little Jungle Boogie for us? I don't know. I, Is it politically correct anymore to I can't. play the song? Mm. Tevin, I, I think, know. technically can, but What's I don't think Jungle it would Boogie? be a good idea I don't to. Know. It sounds a jungle boogie get like up it wouldn't get be something down. that would go over today. Eh, <laughs> love cool. No one's mad about it, I don't think. I don't know. Well, and kind of speaking of on the same lines of singing with an accent or not, do you guys remember the Mongolian cowboy from back in like 2019? Yes. <laughs> that he couldn't speak English, but right. there was just a random country song that he could belt out I'd perfectly. Or yeah. She, yeah, what was that? She bop, she... 
Oh, yeah. She bangs. She bangs. Yeah, that was like 20 years ago, I remember. That was so cool. William Hung, I think his name was. (laughs) She bangs. She bangs. Yep. Uh. All right. (laughs) Tevin, one of these days, I'm going to put the pressure on you to play Jungle Boogie, so I have to find it. Jungle Boogie, I'll have it ready for it does have a great underbeat. I'll have it ready for tomorrow. <laughs> it actually is one of my favorite songs because it was just, it was a huge hit. I know that. It was huge. It's a good band. I like how when you Google She Bangs, William Hung's version is the top result. Is it really? <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Martin takes second fiddle to William she Hung. Bang. She bangs. Was there that because that. of one of those... Uh... Singing show. Yeah, that was um, American Idol, maybe. I think it was American Idol. Oh, yeah, okay. maybe America. I don't know. Probably. One of those. There's like there's seventy billion identical mm-hmm. shows. Yeah. All right. If I go, oh, 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 oh that means the show's over. Yeah, Just show's like over. Jungle Boogie. Stop oh, dancing. Good. Let's just All do right. that. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for listening.